I don't think markets are ignoring it. They're sort of bouncing from where we were just a few days last week. It seemed like everyone was pricing a trade war being imminent and it was going to have huge recessionary consequences. And I, I think the market's fairly pricing it right now that we aren't at the beginning of a trade war necessarily. There's a bit of a spat going on, tariffs well, that aren't... Well, may, I, may I disagree? Just, just, we have started a trade war, haven't well, we? Is it Sixty-eight a billion dollars worth of good. Is, is, it's not nah. small cheese, is it? I think it's small cheese. Oh, you do? In terms okay. of the global right. economy, the size of the economies we're talking about, the amount of tariffs, it's inconsequential. If the these tariffs stay, said, it'll if, get escalated. Oh, let's get into this. Let's do yeah. this straight away. Come on, Patrick. Um, the president said, if the Chinese retaliate, we're going for yeah. it. We're going to do $500 billion worth. Yeah. I mean, he, to be fair to the That's president, he's been as good as his word about starting so this far, thing. Yeah. So That would be a trade war, definitely. Yeah. Uh, $34 billion is not, $50 billion is not, $500 billion. It'll be very interesting. Uh, I think China did 440 billion total trade goods and services, so 500 billion. I think is tough, but maybe his math's better than mine. Oh, I, I thought I saw a bigger thing. figure than that. I must yeah. be. I thought I saw a, a 500 plus handle on that. So maybe I, with services, it's okay. 500 billion. But there's been a slow ratchet up of tensions from the start of this year on certain products. I mean, yeah. it's just started with steel and aluminium, and it's gotten much, much worse. Yeah. Doesn't that create some nerves for you? Well, definitely. <laughs> you, you, you should have some this? nerves. So we've actually de-risked our portfolio a little bit around this. We don't think it's our base case. Um, Last week, I think a lot of people were pushing it towards a base case. Rhetoric to be effective has to be strong, it has to be plausible, and I think Trump's doing a very good job at that. And you're starting to see some wins that Merkel, a month ago, wouldn't have conceded that we'll get rid of tariffs on uh, US autos because it would have made her look weak. And she's, I think, created a little scenario now where all automakers will come together and we'll get rid of tariffs across the board but for everyone. But does this go back to the negotiation position? Because we heard earlier in the week that the Chinese were seeking an alliance with the Europeans and Europe was very quick to say no, we're not interested, which then took us right back to the narrative that perhaps Europe does agree with the United States, it just doesn't want to negotiate like Trump. Yeah. Therefore, if, it, if that is the position, you want to be sort of teaming up with the Americans. You want to be cutting some sort of deal and actually looking like allies in this trade skirmish. So are we going to see a better outcome for Europe as a result? And would that be positive of the stocks here in Europe, which have been beaten up? That would be good. Definitely China's got some unfair advantages. When it came into the WTO, it was a real emerging market. Now it's the second biggest economy in the world. It's still got some of the uh, policies in place that were needed when it was a, a burgeoning economy. Europe, I don't think, wants to side with the US necessarily. It agrees probably with some of the thinking about some of the unfair advantages China may have. But then you've got Trump's rhetoric with Europe and the car makers also being quite strong as recently as yesterday too. So I don't think Europe wants to say we're just going to align ourselves with the US. But I mean, what about the, 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 the truck manufacturers who have got these 20% plus yeah. tariffs going into the United States? I mean, it's all very well to look at one product and say, you're being unfair on that. But as we all know, in the multilateral trade deals that are created between such enormous blocks as the United States and Europe as well, there's winners and there's losers in every industry as well. Uh, and, and the fact is the truck makers still have enormous tariffs going yeah. to the US. So does that one come in then? So does the protection that US truck makers get at the moment, does that disappear? Probably. Again, hurting the heartland. I think it does, and I don't know if it will. Will US uh, truck drivers want to drive a, a Mercedes uh, pickup truck? I don't know if that'll ever come into play. Will there be one? Um, will the Germans want to drive uh, the Fords? These tariffs are there. I don't know if they're that consequential, well, really. Sweet. Hey everybody, it's Hadley Gamble from our new CNBC Middle East Bureau in Abu Dhabi. Thanks for stopping by. Now to watch more, you can try one of the videos that just popped up on your screen. And don't forget to subscribe.